Okay, so let's continue here and hopefully end it off. This is Isaiah chapter 47, verse 8. Now then, listen, you lover of pleasure, lounging in your security, and saying to yourself, I am, and there is none besides me. So who is this talking about? Many people think this is talking about, you know, America. Which it is. It sort of is talking about America. Why? Because the majority of the most highest people are in America. All right? So let's understand this here. This is talking about Yarawashalom. Yarawashalom is the lover of pleasure. Yarawashalom is the one dressed in red. Did we forget about that? So that woman in the basket that we read about in Zechariah chapter 5 verse 9, that's talking about Jerusalem. The two women with the wind in their wings, that's talking about Egypt and Assyria. The woman in the basket, it's you, Yarawashalom. You see, you're going to understand something in these times and in these days. The Most High God says that you, you are Satan. All right? You have become Satan. And we're going to show you just that. So let's go ahead and read Isaiah 47, verse 9. Both of these will overtake you in a moment, on a single day, loss of children and widowhood, as it is happening now. They will come upon you in full measure. Did we forget about that? In the beginning of the video, I said that your land will be measured up and divided. It says, in spite of your many sorceries and all your potent spells. So again, some people may say, no, how can this be talking about Jerusalem? Well, easy. Look what it says here again in the previous verse. Now then, listen. Listen, you lover of pleasure. Let's read Jeremiah 5 and 31, just to back that up. It says, the prophets prophesy lies. The priests rule by their own authority. And my people love it this way. But what will you do in the end? Just like it tells you in Deuteronomy. If they were wise, they would discern their end. But they're not wise. This is the reason why this is being revealed to them. And again, this is never towards the sincere brothers and sisters. Peace, blessings, and love to them. But all you wicked, so-called Israelites, Yisraelites, and Yasharalites, you are Satan. And the Most High God says that you will be punished in the sight of many people, so that all peoples of all language may know that you are Satan. Jeremiah 14 and 14. Then Yahweh said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and the delusions of their own mind. Verse 15. Therefore, this is what Yahweh says about the prophets who are prophesying in my name. I did not send them, yet they are saying, No sword or famine will touch this land. The Hamashiach is going to pick us up. So it says, Those same prophets will perish by sword and famine. Verse 16. And the people they are prophesying to will be thrown out into the streets of Yarawashalam because of the famine and sword. There will be no one to bury them, their wives, their sons, and their daughters. I will pour out on them the calamities they deserve. You see that? You still don't believe that you're Satan? It's the Most High God says, right, that Satan was going to be thrown into the pit, right? The Most High God says that uh, he was going to be trampled underfoot. So now we can understand this scripture here, right? Let's go ahead and read this now. Since we understand that Yarawashalam is Satan... Micah chapter 7 verse 10, right? You thought this was talking about Esau, right? You thought this was talking about America. No, it's talking about you, Yarawashalom. It says, then my enemy will see it and be covered with shame. She who said to me, where is Yahweh your God, right? It's all about the Hamashiach in you, right? You and your lover. You've forgotten your God. Look what it says. She who said to me, where is Yahweh your God? My eyes will see her downfall. Why? Because the Most High God only gave you his words. You see that? He sent Yerushalayim his words. It's you he gave the commands to. It's you he gave laws. And it's you that broke them. So you got to pay the price now. Okay? Again, my eyes will see her downfall. Even now, she will be trampled underfoot like mire in the streets. All right? Verse 11. It says, the day for building your walls will come. The day for extending your boundaries 
Again, you people hate Donald Trump. Well, you're going to hate us more. Because the Most High God says that you people are not part of this. You go wait for your Hamashiachs. Go wait for your breathless gods to save you. All right? But the sincere servants of Yahweh are going to stand firm for their God. Okay? So let's go ahead and continue with this lesson. And let's read Ezekiel 5 and 8 for those that are still in denial. Look what it says here. Judgment against Yerushalayim. Okay? What are you going to learn? You are Satan. Okay? That's why it says Satan and his angels, right? Because you've been following the ways of your enemies. That's your helpers. Look what it says. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Yahweh says. I myself am against you, Yerushalayim. And I will inflict punishment on you in the sight of the nations. Just like, you know, I brought out yesterday in a previous video. The scripture says, prepare chains for the land. It's full of bloodshed. You see that? What's the weather says now? Because of all your detestable idols, I will do to you what I have never done before and will never do again. And what is that? Well, destroy them because they have become Satan. The Most High God has made them into Satan. That's the way it goes. You want to be against your God? Well, the Most High God says he's going to give you the same effect he gave Satan. You think just because it's you, just because he gave you his words and, you know, he said that he's your God, that you can just trample over him and do what you want and you don't have to pay? No, I'm sorry. You're going to have to pay. Again, I will do to you what I have never done before and will never do again. Verse 10. Therefore, in your midst, parents will eat their children, and children will eat their parents. I will inflict punishment on you and will scatter all your survivors to the wind. So go ahead and continue to wait for your Hamashiachs. Right? You want to flee on chariots? You will flee. Goodbye. Okay? Which we're going to talk about the word goodbye and hello in a second, most high willing. So now, let's go ahead and read Hosea 13 and 9. And it says, You are destroyed, Yasharel. Because you are against me, against your helper. Just like it says here in Isaiah 63 and 8. He said, surely there are my people, children, who will be true to me. And so he became their savior, right? Like it says here in Zephaniah 3 and 7. Of Jerusalem, I thought, surely you will fear me and accept correction. Then her place of refuge would not be destroyed, like it tells us. In Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, or 17th chapter. If at any time the Most High God says that he will build up a nation, if they do evil in his sight, then he will not build them up. Okay, but if they repent, then he will build them up. Right, so check this out. Of Jerusalem, I thought, surely you will fear me and accept correction. Then her place of refuge will not be destroyed, nor or my punishments come upon her. But... They were still eager to act corruptly in all they did. So Isaiah 63 and 9. It says, In all their distress, he too was distressed. And the angel of his presence saved them. Right? Talking about his merciful angel, his right hand, Michael the merciful. And it says, In his love and mercy he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. But what happened? Well, what's happening now? Something new under the sun. Look what it says. Yet they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Okay? So he turned and became their enemy. And he himself fought against them. You see, Satan? You are against your God. Again, they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Like it says here. Isaiah 21 and 2. A dire vision has been shown to me. The traitor betrays. The looter takes loot. Elam attacks. Media lays siege. I will bring an end to all the groaning she has caused. At this, my body is wrecked with pain. Pangs seize me like those of a woman in labor. I am staggered by what I hear. I am bewildered by what I see. My heart falters. Fears make me tremble. The twilight I long for has become a horror to me. Why? Because they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. 
So he turned and became their enemy, and he himself fought against them. So this is why the Most High God says, Acknowledge your guilt. Return, you backsliding children. That's all you've been doing, backsliding, rebellious. Okay, Zechariah 9 and 12. Look what it says here. Return to your fortress. Proverbs 18 and 10 tells you the name of Yahweh is a fortified tower. That is our fortress. Okay, so you need to call on the name of Yahweh, your God. You need to hide yourself in the name of Yahweh, your God. He will be your refuge. You understand? So return to Yahweh, your God, right? Your fortress, you prisoners of hope. This is the reason why it says, give glory to the Most High Yahweh. All right? Give, I'm sorry, yeah, give give glory to Yahweh, or he will uh, turn your hope into darkness. Like it says in Jeremiah 13 and 16. But anyways, it says, even now, I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Because why? You've been following the ways of your enemies, okay? This is why it says this here in Malachi 3 and 10. Bring the whole tights into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Okay? Why? Because they've been... uh bringing food to the house of, of, of Babylon, all right? Which we already read about that wicked house. This is the reason why the Most High God says, is he to forget the short ephah, which is accursed, on the ill-gotten treasures from that wicked house? So you need to uh, bring back the food, bring back the, the, the tights, and stop giving it to these wicked gods. Stop going to the houses of these false gods, you understand? And it says here, test me in this, says Yahweh Almighty. Because you people love to test God every day, right? This is what it says. You test him. You test him to his very face every day. So it says, test me in this, says Yahweh Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will not be room enough to store it. Which we're going to talk about the floodgates of heaven. And this is the reason why the Most High God says, you know, if you re if you return to Him, He will return to you. This is the reason why it says that He will be like the dual to Yasharal. He will give you the increase. He will make known to you His words. He will let you acknowledge what Yahweh means, what Yahweh is, who is Yahweh. You understand? So let's go ahead and we're going to read this quickly. Because again, right, the Most High Yahweh says that our people have been following the ways of the, of the enemies. And uh, sorry, before we read that, let's go and read this in Zechariah 9 and 13. I will bend Yahweh the Judah as I bend my, my bow and fill it with Ephraim. I will rouse your son's Zion against your son's Greece and make you like a warrior's sword. Why? Because it tells you how, you know, most of, the, most of our people, they went down following the ways of the Greeks. Okay, they're worshiping the Greek God, <laughs> Jesus, Helios, you understand, whatever else you want to call them. They're following in Greek mythology. So this is why the Most High God says it's time for you to, to, to awake from this Greek myth. All right, this American dream that they have you living in. This is the only way you're going to awake. So now let's read this here. Okay, because the word hello is a daily word that everybody uses. But we're going to find out where hello comes from. So it says hello comes from Old English, how be ow, which is how be thou or ho be thou meaning a wish for good health see also goodbye which is a contradiction of god be with you okay so again we're not going to go all up into these words but again just briefly showing how these words here in america and everywhere else which people use on a daily basis they they mean something else besides what they're telling you that it means okay and you people out there who are blind to this? You just you don't know. You don't know it. Okay, you're not you're not gonna be willing to understand it. You're just gonna continue to follow in their way. So this is the reason why it says that uh, the, simpli the 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 simplicity of fools will kill them. All right. This is why it says, you know, the simple believe every word. <laughs> okay, literally. So if you don't do your research, you're gonna be left out in darkness, and you're not gonna be knowing what are you saying. You're not gonna be knowing what are you worshiping, and therefore. Judgment is going to come upon you because the Most High God says you have to be wise. So Jeremiah 3 and 13 says, Only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against Yahweh your God. 
You have scattered your favors to foreign gods under every spreading tree. You see that? You people have been going to the house of those false gods. This is why you have to return to your fortress. It says, and have not obeyed me, declares Yahweh. It says, return faithless people, declares Yahweh, for I am your husband. I will choose you, one from a town and two from a clan, and bring you to Zion. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. So now let us read in Isaiah chapter 24, verse 22. Again, I brought this out yesterday. So we're going to understand that this is talking about uh, judgment being executed on all the wicked. All right? It does not matter whether you're a Yasharalite, whether you're an Edomite, whether you're an Ammonite, whether you're a Hamite. It does not matter. I So look what it says. They will be herded together like prisoners bound in a dungeon. They will be shut up in prison. See that? Again, I'll bring this scripture out because I just want to show you this word here. All right? It says here, they will be shut up. Which, again, shut up is a daily, you know, it's a daily word that people use when they get angry or, you know, when they're playing around or whatever. They use this word shut up every day. Okay, and it says here they will be shut up in prison and be punished after many days. So we're going to take a look at this word shut up and what does it really, really mean? Because the Most High God says that, you know, it just basically means that they are not going to get no wisdom from, from the Most High God. They won't get no answer. You understand? They won't get no rain. You get it? So uh, Second Chronicles 7 and 13, it says, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins and will hear their land. Sorry, heal their land. Okay, so now let's read Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 17. And it says, then Yahweh's anger will burn against you, and he will shut up, there go that word again, and he will shut up the heavens so that it will not rain, and the ground will yield no produce, and you will soon perish from the good land Yahweh is giving you. So you see why it says in Zechariah, the 14th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, it says, if any of the peoples of the earth do not come up to worship the king Yahweh Almighty, they will get no rain. Because why? Because the Most High will shut up the heavens. All right, so this is what it means here. It says, these people of the earth who do not come up to worship Yahweh, the true living God, they are going to be herded together like prisoners bound in a dungeon. All right? So, again, because why? Because they are Satan. They are against the true living God. Now, let's read this. Jeremiah 13 and 19. The cities in the Negev will be shut up, and there will be no one to open them. Or Yahweh will be carried into exile, carried completely away. Why? Well, you know, we went over this yesterday. That's because they're following the ways of their enemies. They're not going to be willing and obedient. So uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 7. This is a precept to what we just read. Look what it says here. When I snuff you out, I will cover the heavens and darken their stars. See that? A lament for Pharaoh, king of Egypt. As we just read, the cities in the Gev will be shut up. As it is happening today in these times. The Most High God says that He's drying the waters of America. And everything that they believe in. In this place called Babylon. So Ezekiel 32 and 7. Once more. I will cover the heavens and darken their stars. I will cover the sun with a cloud. See that? I will cover the sun with a cloud. And the moon will not give its light. Which This cloud represents Michael the Merciful. Alright? Because why? In these times and in these days. The hands of God are here to feed His people. Alright? Michael and Gabriel, through his spirit, Yahweh. All right? You're supposed to worship Yahweh, your God. You don't go to the left, you don't go to the right. You're supposed to be seeking his face. Job 9 and 7 says, He speaks to the sun, and it does not shine. He seals off the light of the stars. Amos 5 and 8. He who made the Pallades and Orion, who turns midnight into dawn and darkens day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them over the face of the land? Yahweh is his name. There is no other name. Yahweh alone. Alright? Isaiah 45 and 7. 
I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So with that, peace, blessings, and love to you and your family.